Yo, 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 guys, Jared James 4 here, just bringing you some commentary over some old gameplay. Um, this was just a quick match game, but this was against a team. Um, I mean, at this point in the game, I'm, I was wondering if it might be a team, because it's all PlayStation, but you never really know. Uh, so you just see me trapping a little bit. I think I this was a slightly different build than the one I'm using now. But most of the skill points, I'd say like 35 out of the 45 were the same. Um, and I might have played this a little differently than I would now. But uh, So I just go to the castle usually on Castle Kandar. Every now and then I'll like take a risk and try and check the bottom. Because if you go to the top first and they spawn at the bottom, like it is really annoying. They basically just get their loot for free. They'll have full stacks of everything. Uh, and usually the palace ruins has a bunch of crates too, so they'll have a bunch of pink F. But the castle is good for a variety of reasons. Um, the main reason that I think is good is there is a good chance survivors will spawn here. Uh, I don't know exactly the number, but I'd say there's like at least a fucking 25% chance the survivors will spawn here. I, I don't know, at least that's been my luck. And then even if you get here and the survivors haven't spawned here, there's lots of traps, lots of chests that you can trap. As well as every now and then if the survivors don't spawn here, you'll get here and you'll see the map piece in one of the walls. Uh, that's a little bit more rare though. Um, but I mean, even here, you see, look, the survivors spawned here, plus the map piece was here. Uh, but yeah, even if there's no map piece and there's no survivors, just trap until you get to, like, level 3, maybe 4, maybe 5. <clears throat> Probably about 3, you're good to just head out. If there's a chest or something you want to grab as you go, hit that. Um, and I haven't really been giving much commentary on attacking them but uh, it's pretty basic once you find them you set traps and try and possess some shit try and hit them get some threat levels uh, this is actually a favorable area to be fighting them just because it's so cramped and then if they're going up in this tower if you can trap them up in the tower that really helps of course it's early game so you can't do too much until threat level 10, you there's a limit to the pressure you can apply. Uh, but as you can see, like these four, they're sticking together always. Uh, that's kind of a giveaway that it's a team. It's not necessarily always the case. It could just be smart solo cures. But if you see four people in one concert and they all stick together, there's a good chance of the team. Um, I ended up messaging them after the game. We did some private games and we went back and forth. They won some, I won some. Uh, and then at this point in the game, I kind of wondered, like, are these guys running the fast forward shit? Because I see three leaders in Cheryl. Uh, which they were in the end. <sighs> But yeah, at this point, just try and collect some energy, set traps ahead of them where they gotta leave, and then as they run into a trap, if you possess that early game, that'll save you some energy. You only have one unit, though, like... <clears throat> so if you have a team like this that just sticks together, you see what happens. They just kind of stunlock you. But it's okay, like... Uh, I, I don't get too disheartened by them stunlocking you a little like this. Uh, obviously, when they're all meleeing you, it's not doing much for you as far as draining their resources. But as long as you're hitting them a little, like right there, sure, pops a cola. That's one cola down, right? Just from a few hits. And now this fast forward gang shit, it does work. Uh, it's great on objectives as far as the damage goes you make up for a lot of the damage you lose by not having a hunter just by all the buffs but the main issue with it is everyone is squishy 
uh, and they don't have hunter stamina, so they like some of them do have decent stamina, so maybe they'll have like a, another dodge, extra dodge over a warrior or support. But it's just the this team comp is just really squishy. That's the main thing with it. Um, and that's what basically ends up costing them the game, as you'll see. Uh, and like I said, this, is, it, this team comp does work, but it's kind of like a meme. Uh, it's a meme that can work, basically. But I do suggest if you were to run this, maybe try and go with guns a little bit more. Uh, and any time, like, any skill is ready, maybe, and you break their balance bar, everyone can get up in melee, but... Like, you see, just a few hits on Annie, and her health bar drops drastically. And then at this point, I wasn't really putting in the one into trap yet, but... This is still a good way to level up your skill tree. Four into basic. I mean, at this point, I'm sitting on a point because uh, I'm waiting to hit threat level 10. I probably could have put one in elite. Yeah, I would have definitely put one in elite by now, uh, the way I play now. You just want the elite portal so that... And this was kind of unlucky. Their last map piece was like 20 yards away from the first objective. Um, at least I was threat level 10 though when... Uh, I mean basically when I hit. And then you see I just throw it in elite anyway. So just yeah, put one in elite. You would, <clears throat> By threat level 10 you want to have one one in elite four well i guess now i would do one in trap one in elite one in no one in trap one in elite three in possession one in boss and why is it three in basic one yeah uh i play a little differently than i do here but here it's just spawn possess spawn possess and then any time there I stay in the creature if there's like a ton of damage and you figure your creatures gonna die by the time it gets <clears throat> you get out of it uh, or I mean if you figure it's gonna die before your stun ends just hop out of it but if you think you can get another hit off after the stun stay in it so it's just kind of you have to gauge how fast they're killing you uh, and for these guys, I'm like, I could get one more hit after, which just gives you, and right there, that, you see how fast the objective is done, that's, that's how I knew they are running fast forward. Uh, and that's the other thing that's definitely a giveaway, that it's a team. If you see a team comp like this, and then everyone has fast forward on, you know what I mean? There's no way, like, four solo queuers get together. And then everyone has a fast forward build and they all pick their characters, right? I would give that like a 0.000001% chance. Uh, and that's why after the game I messaged them and I was like, Yo, GG guys, you're really good. You want to do some private games? And then, yeah, we did private games, went back and forth. Um... And then, like, they didn't run the fast-forward gang anymore, because, like I said, it does work, but it's sort of a meme, and they're a lot squishy. So, I mean, they ran, like, real team comps, like Hunters, Warriors, and shit like that. But, yeah, <clears throat> here I kind of knew on objectives I was going to get screwed, because it's fast-forward, so you're not really worrying too much about the objective. Uh, just try and keep, you know, draining resources, like Cheryl uses another cola there. Has to use her alts. Um, and everyone's so squishy that you see, like, it doesn't do much. Um, and then Cheryl wastes a cola on Annie there. And I'm stunned, but they don't... This is where, like, you see, they have the damage to take care of me and stun me, but... If it was like a hunter and a warrior, 
they would kill you during that stun more than likely, as long as they have good weapons. Uh, and then yeah, you just see kind of a lot of the same shit. I'll spawn possess. If there's an AI still around after I get out of the creature or the creature dies, I'll hop in that rather than spawning. But if I don't really see anything immediately, I just spawn and possess. And Right there, I don't even get a hit off. <laughs> but... Yeah, and then there, actually, they do kill me, because, uh... Arthur's sword buff. Oh, here I put into... That's strange. I was playing a lot differently here. She... I don't even put into Infernal Energy until, like, the end anymore. It can help a little, but... Uh, now I just max up basic possession elite and boss first usually maybe some games I'll still do energy over the elites but uh, yeah and then when I'm dropping those portals there it's not because I'm near anyone or anything it's just that I want to get some threat level points as I'm moving uh, you get 60 points for placing a basic and 50 points for placing elites Uh, and then here I decide to go and try and stall them because they're close by. Sometimes I'll go set proxies at the dark ones. Here I just decided to pressure them because they were close by. The other reason uh, is this team comp. I've, it's a little easier to pressure them when it's this team comp just because like how squishy they are. You see how quickly Annie can get downed. Like, that's not really going to happen. Like, it could happen to a hunter if you're able to actually hit them. But most of the time, the hunters are just going to dodge away from you, like, five, six times before you're even able to hit them. Uh, and if they're really smart about their dodging, about their angles, uh, you know, you won't even, you won't even be able to hit them after that. Because the hunters will run out of <coughs> stamina eventually. If they just keep dodging backwards the whole time, They'll run out of stamina eventually, and you will be able to hit them. But if not, then... Uh, if not, then it'll take a while, and you'll never really get the hits off on Hunters. But with this team comp, like you can see, they're all trying to melee me. But the issue with the melee me is it's they're squishy. Uh, so you just see the same thing, right? Warlord's kind of... I wouldn't say it's really easy to play. And you have to definitely take some hard L's on your way up to 45. Uh, <laughs> you shouldn't be taking a crazy... like. It was different when I started, because I started when the game launched. If someone's starting the game fresh, uh, you're probably going to run in some nasty teams or something, and not really know what you're doing yet, and yeah, it's going to be rough. <coughs> Another thing you'll see me not do a whole lot is flip cars for half the game, because it's not like a viable strategy, even against teams. Like, y you can't... You can't flip cars for the first 10 minutes of a game and then expect to beat a SWAT team. Like, it just, it don't work that way. Even if you lose to, like, a bunch of people bringing cars on the book or something, like, I promise you, flipping cars isn't really going to change that much. Because the teams that do that are going to be in cars early anyway, and any time you do flip a car, they're just going to go pick up two more. Like, there's cars everywhere. You're wasting your time flipping cars. Don't do that shit. <laughs> you can flip cars sometimes. Like, <clears throat> I'm not against flipping a car that the survivors are using or trying to break a car that the survivors are using if everyone's if it's a team that just likes to stick together and stay in one car you know yeah f try and flip that car try and break that car make them hoof it to the next one try and stall them out a little but for the teams that are gonna do the car stuff they're gonna they're gonna have the cars early on anyways so like you flipping some cars on one end of the map isn't going to change the fact that all four have a car basically two minutes into the game. Um, 
I, I mean, I suppose flipping cars next to your objective. Like, it's still... You're going to get more payout out of draining their resources than you are going to get out of flipping cars. Because if you just flip the cars, you never drain resources. So how, how are you supposed to win like that? Um, just always stay on them. Even if they have, like, a bunch of hunters, it's like, just keep spawning shit. Try and drain their ammo. Another thing you gotta remember is sometimes the survivors are gonna get good RNG on weapons, other times they're gonna get bad RNG on weapons. And then same thing with objectives. I don't really know what happened to Annie right there, and like it's kinda just pure chaos happening. Uh, but this is kinda what ends up happening with this team comp. It's just easy to down. Uh people if they take hits because they just don't have the health like warriors will have like 500 600 700 extra hp uh plus they can get double shield bars so that's the right large reason <coughs> why the warriors are able to duke it out with you and here you see the storm actually comes Sometimes you don't even see the storm on Castle Kandar. Now nah, it's just down to Cheryl. And pretty rough. Not much she can do. Just try dodge. But at this point, it's pretty much GG in this game. But they played really well. Uh, like I said, and we did c private games, and these guys beat me a few times. I beat them a few times. So it's pretty even. Uh, but this kind of shows you how you would play against a team. Obviously, this isn't like an optimal team comp, but you see they still play quite well with it. But yeah, GG's to them. Uh, let me know if you want to see more. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's look at the stat screen, I guess. Yeah, you can see they did decent damage, but it's not like a hunter's gonna do, and then they're just too squishy, so it's kinda rough. Alright, peace out.